We're uh, we're working on our virtual backgrounds, folks. But if you're if you're just joining <laughs> us while we do that, um, let me welcome everyone at Ponyfest to our Pony Production Panel, the PPP. I have with me three of our wonderful artists from Equestria Girls and from My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Uh, so if you would all please uh, just take a second to introduce yourselves and talk a little bit about uh, what you did on the shows, just explain what role you took, and then we will go from there. Steph has seniority, so I think she should go first. <laughs> Steph. Uh, I am Steph Mahoney. Um, I was on My Little Pony from the very beginning into pretty much the very end. Um, I worked on seasons one through nine, worked on Equestria Girls, the first three, first like movie I just did revisions, and then the other two I supervised uh, posing on, and... Yeah, I've been involved. I've seen the rise of the Bronies, and it's been it's been an amazing experience. It's taken up a huge chunk of my animation career, and I am so grateful for it. That's me. <laughs> Thank you, Steph. Who's Tori next? or I guess Megan? You go I'll, next. <laughs> I'll go. Okay, so I'm Tori Grant. I'm a storyboard artist. I worked on Equestria Girls from Legend of Everfree onward. <laughs> Um, and then I also worked on a little bit of season seven, a little bit of season eight, and then the final season. Yes, that's it. And Megan. <laughs> um, hi, my name is Megan. I worked on season two of Equestria Girls up until um, the end of Equestria Girls. So I was involved from uh, the spring breakdown special to uh, the holidays unwrapped special. So I was only on the crew for the very very tail end of um, I see the what you did there. Tail. Tail <laughs> end. Yes, I, I meant to do that. I peak, totally meant to do that. <laughs> ah, well, if we were in person right now, this is the point where I'd be saying that this is your first convention and the first panel, and I'd have the audience yes. give you a huge round of applause. But unfortunately, oh, we can't no. quite do that. But <laughs> I will make sure that they will give you a huge shout in our Discord channel. By the way, folks, oh, the Discord yes. channel will be taking questions in the latter half of the hour. So if you have questions, or if you don't, think of some. You've got half an hour, and then we'll get to them. But yes, welcome all three of you. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Let's, let's start at the beginning, at the very, very beginning. How did you? I'm not going to even ask how you first started getting work in the industry. How did you first become artists? Too general a question. When did you first start <laughs> visual art? When did you first fall in love with that? I'm assuming you love it or you wouldn't do it. Oh man. I hate my job. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what have we got ourselves into? Yeah. Uh, I feel like I've been doing it forever. Just drawing constantly, watching so many cartoons. Then I was like, I'm gonna make comics of my own. I had like Pokemon comics and Avatar The Last Airbender comics that I would draw. So just like, since I was a wee bab. A wee babby. <laughs> You're Anybody? saying that as if that's a bad thing to like those two franchises. No, no, I... it's great to like them. My art was just <laughs> not oh, great. I'm sure it's fabulous. I'm not a writer. Let's just say that. <laughs> so those are those are two of your influences, Steph and Megan. What about what about you two? Sailor Moon. <laughs> Sailor, Sailor Moon. Moon for sure. Yeah, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Remember the episode with the pencils? There was like two animator girls, and they were like, yes, "Yeah, they're like we're going to be animators together." And the the uh, director was like, "Her leg is two millimeters too long." And I was like, "There's a job to do animation. You could animate <laughs> and be paid, and it's a thing." And they're very picky, but I must figure this out. So, <laughs> I don't think I would cite that episode in particular as uh, my influence, but I really, really liked um, the transformation sequences. Like, I just I like the characters. I was um, just enraptured with the characters and I don't know, I've been drawing since I first laid eyes on Sailor Moon at, I don't know how old I was, like three, four. So but... old. <laughs> <You're> so <laughs> old, Steph. We're, we're just babies compared to you. <laughs> so, Mid-90s. <laughs> Sailor Moon, huge influence by the sound of it. What are you folks watching these days? Are you still, what, what do you watch to unwind? Uh, I recently just finished Midnight Gospel. <laughs> Midnight Gospel is Gospel's good, yeah. It's, it was, like, I had no idea what I was getting into, but it's such a wholesome, weird animation. <laughs> I, I just love the idea of it, because it's pretty much like a podcast that they animated. 
I confess I don't know it. I'm desperately Googling it now. Do you want to, could, you, could you give folks in a rundown of it who, who aren't familiar with it? Is that okay? Can you explain I, it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Is it safe for work to explain? To explain well, it, it's ooh, not. maybe not. If if it's not, yeah. we got to keep things to a PG level. So yeah. maybe we should just say check it out if you're interested. If yeah. you're above eighteen, is that yes? Don't, I think don't watch it if you're under eighteen. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <It's>, there's <laughs> some dark stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I have recently started re binging Avatar: The Last Airbender. Actually, <laughs> that's just, just hit Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was on Netflix before in Canada, but then it got taken down. Oh. Um, and now, yeah, just lately, I'm like, oh yeah, it's back up, and I've just. I'm two days in and it's like, I'm almost done. Yeah. Beautifully constructed show. Oh, my dog just came in. Ooh, can we, can we see them? Let's see Ruben. That's the thing about Zoom. We have to see the pets when they appear. My oh, husband Tori. just took them for a walk. Tori, this is Ruben. Po? Oh, po hello Ruben. downstairs. I, oh, I'm not going to go in. <laughs> so, uh, Pony. That's Way back in, in 2010, this thing started. And Steph, you've been on it from the beginning. So can I ask, can we start with you and ask you how yeah. you first got into the show, was, how you booked Pony? I was, this is kind of silly. And some people who may have heard me talk before have heard me tell the story. But um, I was working on a different show. And there's whisperings about the studio that we might be working on the reboot of My Little Pony. And uh, Woody and Jason Tyson were working on a test. And I was like... Me and my friend Holly kind of poked them a lot and we we decided to bring in all our own pony our old ponies from when we were kids to the studio and like we'd like brush their hair in front of their offices and <laughs> and like pony me can I and we would snoop on stuff and and then yeah so it was just they wanted people who were really enthusiastic about it and we pestered them enough and we somehow got in and even Lauren Faust came to the studio and did a little talk um to us and Kind of presented the show before we started working on it and it, that was really really cool and yeah that's how i got in just i happened to be right place right time and know so, a few people who were already involved with the subtle pressure of the original generation uh, early <laughs> yeah I had, I had my old apple jack so it was like she's still the best pony um <laughs> so <laughs> yeah i brought her in and i brought my sea ponies and yeah there we, yeah, we decorated our our area to be all we call it rainbow sunshine unicorn palace <laughs> we saw a photo somewhere it was amazing yeah now, Megan and Tori, were you fans of the original Gens, or were you? Did you get into the show via Gen Four? Uh, I or was were you even fans of the show before you worked on the show? I should phrase it that way. Yes, to both. I was a huge fan of like original My Little Pony. Like I had a bunch of ponies, and my sister-in-law like has a huge collection of like the old ponies. And yeah, I, even as a kid, I was drawing the old ponies, and then I think I was in college when. Uh, Gen 4 came out and I was like oh this is so cool and like for an assignment I think I did a board <laughs> <laughs> like I drew uh, some sort of rainbow dashboard I can't really remember what happens in it but so like when I got a test to work on Pony I was like this is it I prepared for this moment <laughs> but I, I was just a huge fan of the show to begin with it's so cute right it's it um, and Megan. Uh, I was in high school when Pony started. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> now I'm feeling old as well, Steph, yeah. so don't worry. Don't worry, I'm right there with you. <laughs> I was, like, I was in grade 12. I was just about to go to university, but um, I I was not super into um, the original gens of ponies when I was a kid, but I did... I did just learn of um, G4 through osmosis at the time it started. I was like, I, what's all this commotion about? Why is everybody talking about ponies? I'm, I guess I'll just watch a couple episodes and see what all the fuss is about. And I actually found myself to be like really, really um, taken in by it. Like I was like, oh my God, this is actually like super good for what is essentially like a kid's, Flash show, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh, I gotta keep watching more. And so I just kind of got sucked into it. I wasn't really in um, the pony fandom per se, but like I did, I did draw some fan art of it when I was in college and stuff. And like I, <laughs> there were even a couple joke ones, like realistic, realistic Pinkie pies and stuff, saying Studio B, hire me, <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that, <laughs> just as jokes. And um, I actually uh, started at um, 
Wild Brain, what was formerly known as DHX up until last year, um, as a board artist on Carmen Sandiego, which um, after that ended, um, I was asked if I wanted to jump on to either um, MLP proper or Equestria Girls. And um, so the thing about at that time, the difference between MLP and Equestria Girls was My Little Pony was being produced in um, DHX's really, really run down <laughs> crappy building. You mean our <laughs> beautiful studio? <laughs> yes, I do. It, there was a DHX had um, two studios. There was like the, the big new shiny one that was like within walking distance from my apartment. And the really like old run down one that was like really dark and like leaking. I love that place. Terrifying. <laughs> DHX this doesn't have that building anymore, place. but it's like, do you want to work on Pony and be in the scary building? Or do you want to work on Equestria Girls and being like the nice new building with lots of light and stuff? And I was like, yeah, Equestria Girls. <laughs> I love that that's what sealed the deal. I love that that was yeah, the clincher. It, between, it wasn't, a, you know, adherence to one else in particular or the other. It was just the... <laughs> It was like, it's not the only one. Environment. <laughs> what there I was a lot of people, if given a choice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of people who chose different shows to be in the new building. So, yeah. yeah. I so liked our building. <laughs> Me too. We had, we had fun. Yeah. We, had, we were yeah. kind of like away from the, the Eye of Saruman or whatever. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, I. So we could party on the roof. <laughs> yep. We still can party on the roof. It wasn't as good. <laughs> Yeah, it's well. There's oh. perks with either one, you know. Yeah. I went there once, and I was just like, "This is yeah, depressing." No. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, aside from the importance of uh, choosing your projects based on the newness of the building in which you're going to work, uh, my question was: going to It be... was also close to my apartment. Like, I could walk to the new building and not have to pay for transit. That, no, so. I think that's a sensible decision. I would have been right there with you. <laughs> um, yeah, I. I would have made the same choice, I think. But aside <laughs> from that important lesson, uh, I want to ask what lessons you have drawn from your time working on either Equestria Girls or Friendship is Magic. What, because uh, Steph, you said a large chunk of your career you'd spent working on this. Megan and Tori, you spent a good few years on it. What did that experience teach you that you're bringing forward into the next stage of your careers? Mm, man, yeah, I rose from from animation to supervising to even doing some directing, uh, shadowing under Jim. And I just learned the bigger picture of the per like what goes into a production and all how important every single person is. And also just over the years, uh, Pony was so much fun. And, and I mean, it was hard, I'm not gonna lie, it's a hard show, um, but everyone was like really enthusiastic. And it, it also, even though Pony was great, it could have, it could have been a different show and we still probably would have had as much fun and respect for each other because the people that were on it. And yeah. I think that also shows in the, the final product is like we really cared about each other and, and then therefore we cared about and respected other people's positions and we wanted to do it good and we wanted to make it a good show that other people would like. And I think, yeah, the people really make it. Yeah. It's hard to say if like this cute colorful show is what made it such a good experience or if it was just the team. But because... <laughs> Yeah, because I've it was my favorite team to work with, and thankfully I still work with a lot of that team today. Like the show I'm on right now is comprised mostly of pony people, um, and yeah, I friendship is magic. It's true. <laughs> yeah, it sounds so silly even after all these years, but it's true. Yeah, yeah. My my story related to that was it, it just working on Equestria Girls girls. Ugh, sorry, it really um, hit hit home to me like how much, well, first of all, I just want to say like Equestria Girls was, it was a really, really small team. Mm -hmm. Like it was um, the board artists, um, Kat and Ishii, the directors, and some designers, and that was it. Like we took up a really, really tiny amount of floor space on one floor of the, of, uh, the studio building. And um, Right when I started uh, my first board, uh, my cat, who I had had for 12 years at that point, had started suffering some really major health problems out of nowhere. And it was, oh, it was so just sorry. like, it's, yeah, it's, it's okay. It happened a couple years ago. I'm all right now. But it was, um, <laughs> it was, it was really, really difficult trying to balance some um, getting work done with 
like all these vet bills piling up and just the kind of like emotional strain that it puts on you basically losing a member of your family out of nowhere and um yeah unfortunately I did have to put my cat down but like over the course of a few weeks but like I just felt so awful that I I was having trouble like handing in handing in work on time just or like to the standard that I wanted it to be so like Kat and Ishii they were super super um understanding and they were super sympathetic and like the entire revs team just like hopped on and helped me and they were like yeah it's okay you need take care of what's going on in your personal life like it's 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 okay we've we've got each other's backs we're a small tight-knit team and um we we help each other out when there are emergencies like this so like if anything um working on equestria girls showed me like it's it's so amazing to have uh, co-workers that will just that will just like be there for you like that like it's regardless of whether like the show has cool cred or not like if the team you're working on you're working with like doesn't vibe together like it just won't be a good experience and yeah like, I agree. having everybody care for each other <laughs> was just it made and then it you could do your better. best work like you were able to go and you know rest and do what you needed to do and you could come back fresh and creative and yeah, yeah. and I think <laughs> yeah, the love and that got a no it's good <laughs> No, no, thank you for, for sharing that so much. The, I think that the, the love and camaraderie of, of the team, uh, or teams, I should say, behind the shows really does come through in the shows. You have to sort of believe in what you're doing. We had Jim uh, at Ponyfest 2.0, uh, and he talked about just the quality of shows and how, even if it's... <sighs> We've all worked on our stinkers before. You can... Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> even if it doesn't turn out quite the way you want it, no one has set out to make a bad show. Everyone is putting yeah. their, their heart into it. And there's there's value in that. And certainly I'm, I'm glad that uh, it was such a supportive environment behind the scenes, because it seems that way. I think, as I say, it definitely comes across. Oh, it, was, it was amazing. Positive and... experiences then for all, for all three of you, you would oh, say. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. If I don't there really want to... Like... Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 please, please. I guess the... Something... Oh, <laughs> I wonder if I if I should say this, but um, Equestria Girls Season 1 had like a... The scope was a lot more contained than Equestria Girls Season 2, but the production schedule didn't change too much. So we were just like, oh my God, there's all this like action and all these like fight sequences and it's like really big and bombastic. And then it's like, yeah, you still have like four weeks to do it on <laughs> like, a time oh. yeah <laughs> well if you look at like if I whenever I every now and then I take a little trip and I watch season one or something and the, the quality of season one versus season nine is insane and we never changed our schedule really either like it was from all those years it was pretty much the same setup we uh we, we did learn though each time you learn and you grow and you get you know people who know what they're doing from each try to get the same people back because they know the show and we get reuse and oh that didn't work this time we should try something else you know and you learn and you grow but it definitely would be nice for more action stuff to have more time <laughs> yeah. it doesn't always happen yeah, so it... was it oh beg your pardon oh, no, sorry go no, ahead. no go ahead <laughs> i was just going to ask if it was uh the that sort of learning and experience that accounted for that shift in time or whether there were other variables involved i know that um Woosie and uh, oh, beg your pardon. Uh, I'm, 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 yes, thank you. How did I forget Jason Teeson's name? I'm oh, <laughs> awful. Um, I know that they were pushing Flash to kind of the most uh, far off boundaries that you could get it to to function. Did you find um, as you progressed on the show that that the technology evolving was helping you or hindering we, you? I mean, I've used Harmony like Tune Boom, and I've used Flash and. We kept for the for the longest time. We never even upgraded our Flash. We just used the same old version of Flash for almost all the seasons. Um, so even with the extra uh, things that they added to the newer versions, it's called Animate now. For those who aren't aren't aware, Adobe Animate. Um, it, it's not it always, animate. <laughs> no one calls it Animate. Yeah, <laughs> no. But it's not about the program. It's about what you do with it. And if you go back and you watch like season one, because we knew we didn't have a huge timeline and everything, um, all the 
all the main characters' body shapes are the same because you could use find and replace color. You could swap colors, you could swap symbols to change cutie marks, you could swap eye shapes. So we were able to do a really cool run cycle for Pinkie Pie and then do a few things and now it's Applejack. And, uh, you know, and, and after a while, you, and also if you see big long shots with a whole bunch of ponies, we would cut the feet off or we would duplicate ponies because at the time, that's all we had. We didn't have a huge library. You cut um, the feet off ponies? Storyboards. The, the, <laughs> I got you. I got you. I got you. Come on. There used to be like a, Woody made like a Bible and it was like trying to keep it as simple and graphic as possible because originally it was supposed to be like Celestia never had a three quarter view. She was pretty much only ever supposed to be seen in one view, uh, only profile. <laughs> and she was supposed to, her hair moved because she wasn't supposed to move and that was supposed to help save time. But <laughs> Then you'll see there's big battle fights with her after and because you, you gotta you raise the bar each time and you just have to figure it out and we became more you know borders pushed it and then pe like people in flash tried to do what they could to make things work <laughs> i think you succeeded quite well aside from the cutting off the pony feet i mean you know what goodness I, meant. <laughs> gracious. I, I know what i know what you meant but slip is annoying sometimes so <laughs> we um we had a question uh, actually in the, the chat, and we're gonna be taking some more questions from our viewers shortly, but there was a question about the extent to which the work is uh, paper versus digital, analog versus digital. So in, is it entirely digital? Do you storyboard digitally? Is there a hand-drawn component before it enters the flash uh, pipeline? Can you, can you break that down for me? It's uh, pretty much all digital from start to finish. Even I think the scripts are typed. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I it, think I, I I write on paper just like when I'm planning my boards, but it's like little yeah, tiny same. scribbles, but it's just notes for me. It's nothing that anyone would really see. Yeah, yeah. I think like the most that you'd get uh, from hand-drawn stuff would be boards. And that yeah. even that depends on like the individual board artist. Like I personally like to do paper thumbs, like a script pass. Uh, before I take everything digitally just to, so I can like plan everything out super super rough on paper and then like do it cleaner so I don't have to like redo things digitally over and over and over again. Paper is disposable, recyclable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our, our, yeah. our schedule is definitely set up for digital like it's it's we had um, not a lot of time to do you know each episode the posing team had three weeks per episode and then animation, when we did animate in house, it was probably a, about the same, two to three weeks. And it's, if you could reuse something like same with, with boards, like if you could take something, blow it up, copy a panel and move a background or something and save time, then mm. it just benefits everybody. So. I'm trying to remember a line, I think it was The Simpsons, but something to the effect of, do you, do you create the show live? No, we find that's very hard on the animator's hands. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So uh, let's let's talk about oh goodness gracious I had it and I lost it no I've got it again um, a particular um, part of Equestria Girls or Friendship is Magic uh, a particular sequence that you were involved with of which you are particularly proud just a, a board or a sequence that you feel that you really nailed that you put a lot of time into and you think you pulled it off particularly beautifully oh man. There's so many like parts that are near and dear to my heart. <laughs> yeah, there's a laundry list of them. Yeah. Well, please, I mean, if you want to name more than one, by all means. And we can just say favorite parts. It doesn't necessarily have to be something you worked on. You can take credit for it if you want. We won't know. <laughs> um, I loved working on the 200th episode. That was yes. That was so fun, and like the layout team. I loved getting like little little like clips Snippets. of the faces that I drew and they like when I'm when I'm boarding I'll draw a face to get the point across I don't really expect it to come back how I drew it <laughs> but like Steph's team would keep on sending me things and I'm just like great yeah <laughs> that that season I was working under Jim and uh, most seasons I I got lucky that way but um it was since it was the last one we used a lot of times we had to keep, try to keep things more on model it was kind of more I think what Hasbro wanted originally but it was the last season and Jim's like or are they gonna do fire us <laughs> like <laughs> have fun you know like let's push it and and fa you know each season we try to sneak in more and more personnel like those touches at the board the, the board artists were phenomenal so we wanted to try to get that it did take a lot more time but 
it was worth it. So, yeah. but yeah, I think, man, I like the season, the battle with, you know, Chrysalis, like the first appearance of Chrysalis. And I got to work on that episode. I got to stay on additional time and I was posing at the time, but um, it helped do a few more scenes. That was a lot of fun. And uh, man. Oh, and then like uh, Rainbow Rocks, like the battle with the Dazzle, like, yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> the Siren battle. <laughs> Yep. Megan? Oh, um, there there are a few I'm I'm proud of in Equestria Girls. Like uh the I I was uh the one who got to board um Find the Magic, the, like the dazzling song. And your, your um, board was so good. I it referenced was- a lot of Beyonce music videos. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently Revs had to tone it down because some of the poses were too uh <laughs> But um, yeah, I put, uh, I started that board like literally two days after I had to put my cat down. So I was like, I'm just going to channel all of my emotions into this board because it's, it's about like, you know, finding joy in life after you've had to lose something. For me, it was my cat. For them, it was their evil medallions <laughs> that let them sing. <laughs> so I just, yeah, that. Um the thing I'm most proud of, I think, is uh, it's in um, Holidays Unwrapped, and uh, it's uh, the Snowball Fight episode, and uh, the episode is called The Thin Red Pie. The script I got was called Saving Pinky's Pie, and uh, like the script called for like a Saving Private Ryan-esque uh, like beach landing scene so that's what i did except i made it snowballs and oh lord <laughs> i've seen that <laughs> oh it's uh i i watched the original scenes from uh, saving private ryan for reference i was like oh i'm i'm depressed now like i, I have to turn this on but i i tried to get it across like best i can uh, best i could with like the like going so far as referencing actual shots um some of the visual references and the visual puns in the show do do go to some pretty dark places to some fairly uh yeah dramatic media you're... i mean you mentioned saving private ryan but yeah uh, yeah there was um was it snips or snails who's who's like the like the kind of gangly one is that is that snips, snips. if i say snails... one i'm gonna get it wrong and i'm gonna get in, snails in is a short one okay yeah snips um there's a part in that episode where um, he's like, I lost my boot. Can somebody help me find my boot? And he's just hopping around like with one, with one socked foot. And then he, he finds his boot, picks it up. And it's just like, oh, I found it before getting totally just shot down with snowballs. And that's supposed to be like a direct reference to that part in the beach landing scene where uh, the guy just- um, I totally messed up, up, his up arm. that snail. <laughs> oh. It's almost like we haven't worked on it for a few years. <laughs> it's been a while, so. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, um, snips or snails, whichever one he is, he's. Uh, yeah, that was supposed to be a reference to the guy just picking up his severed arm and running away with it. Goodness gracious, we're we're touching on ponies and having limbs removed quite a lot for a PG rated yeah, street. What is- and same thing, is this girls... Star Wars or they lose a limb and all of those? Sorry, you were saying? Oh, the thing about Equestria Girls is because it was the spinoff, like, it's it saddens me to say nobody really cared about it as much as um, MLP proper, but <laughs> oh. because of Some that... Some people really, really cared about it. I, I, I think you, you'd be surprised by the number of fans who, who are very appreciative and fond of both. It's... Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> but... It's uh oh I forgot what I was gonna say now. Sorry. Um from from Hasbro's standpoint, from like a production standpoint, Equestria Girls was just not as big as MLP. That's probably the more Okay. That's probably that's, the right way to say it. Like that's fair comment, yeah. MLP had a huge, huge crew and Equestria Girls did not. And because we were we were so small and tight knit and I don't know, the whole the whole crew had like a bunch of inside jokes and like sort of inside references that we keep putting in like um i think uh, the fan name fan names for them are uh, curly winds and whiz kid like yeah. every board artist <laughs> like put them together in any scene we could like just 
every every if there was an opportunity to put some incidentals in like we would put those two in together <laughs> and um yeah we could i think we could get away with like a lot more stuff in equestria girls than we could with pony because yeah i think hasbro is just like yeah ponies ponies the main thing and equestria girls is just kind of trailing behind it well thank you for having the um the sense of humor to do that <laughs> to go for those references and to go for those those little um, Easter even eggs. Th even though it's a smaller show, like the, the team did care a lot about making it the best we could. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and, and Putting a bunch again, of in. I think you absolutely succeeded there. And a lot of people, I'm scrolling through the channel now because people are saying how much they appreciate Equestria Girls and your work on it. So oh, thank you. Guys. <laughs> Thanks, um, chat. We are also being told that um, Snails is the tall one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, once I said it, I was like, I saw Tori's face, I'm like, wait a second, I think I got that wrong. <laughs> the only reason why I made that face is because one time, I think it might have been in Legend of Everfree, they, I think they had like animated it already, and I watched it, and I was like, Snips and Snails, like, the wrong one was talking, and I was like, <gasps> you better fix this. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and then Kat We, we was had like, a scene come back that it was like Applejack, or Spike was speaking Applejack's line, and I was like, wait. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so Good we've stuff. talked about the, the Saving Private Ryan reference. Um, and did you all have a chance to answer what uh, your your proudest sort of moment, proudest scene, proudest board were? I think you all had a chance to chime in yeah, on I think, that. I think we did, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then moving on, we've talked about the Saving Private Ryan reference. What other ref There was a question from Master Thief, attorney at Fuff. <laughs> Fuff. Um, <laughs> your, your particular favorite references that you were able to sneak in, either in the background or even more prominently than that. I was able to, um, it, there was uh, spikes, no, no, it wasn't, yeah, wait, uh, Lost and Pound, <laughs> sorry, not Spike, the other dog, um, Susie's dog, uh, Princess the Thunderguts. The fluffy pink one? Yeah, the fluffy, fluffy purple one. Yeah. Um, it was one of those. Snails. Uh, she was... <laughs> yes, sorry. Snails the dog. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those um, choose your own adventure uh, YouTube shorts and uh, there were three paths you could go down rarity Fluttershy and Spike and in the rarity path um, she's like trying to run away from this dog because it's all muddy and it's getting all over her clothes and she's just like oh god no and um, you know it's uh, she's like hiding in the bushes from this dog and I was able to slip in um, an alien reference where the dog's snout comes in and it's just like mm -hmm. <laughs> and then it was just like <laughs> I was I remember that. That in. it was very short but i i am proud of being nicely done it. i feel like i can't think of any reference that got in i feel like there was a lot that i was like jim can we do this um but in the 200th episode when god who is it applejack and twilight and spike are like breaking into like the catacombs and Maud is showing them like where to kick the rock. Uh, originally, I had like written in that she should say like, have fun storm in the castle when they go <laughs> in. <laughs> but Maud wasn't speaking in that episode. So it's a lot more difficult if a character isn't speaking because then you have to like get the voice actor in sure. for like a separate occasion. But yeah. And Steph, what about you? I can't even think there's I mean there was so many over the years and um and like before board artists started boarding incidentals because they all just used to be incidental ponies we started putting certain ponies we're like we make backstories we're like these ponies are friends and da, 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 and um and one of the people I worked with Tim he he started putting Lyra and Bon Bon together um, ah, yes. just because he liked their colors and stuff and then he's like well they're friends and then this and then it just bloomed <laughs> and I just <laughs> I think that it was really cool that it started off just with like kind of a inside, not inside joke, but just like a, we like these characters together. And since they're incidentals, it doesn't really matter. And then, you know, a lot of incidentals became real characters and had real stories and real lives and voice actors. And, and I think that that was really cool. So that's not really like a, a it's not really what the question that you're asking, but I just think it was kind of a, a neat thing that arose from just, us trying to entertain ourselves like with Derpy and 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 how it became a thing and well know. I mean that comes back to the 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 attitude it's nothing that the I, show. I if you're all having a good did. time and yeah. enjoying yourselves mm -hmm. and making things to 
amuse yourselves, that comes through in the show and the fandom picks up on that. And in Pony, there are some incidentals that are like, like just base, like actual references. Like I remember yeah. seeing the big Lebowski ponies. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. I think. Yeah, those were great. Yeah, there's so many of those awesome ponies out there. There were so actually that- some really cute Sailor Moon ones as well that I feel like didn't get put in a lot. But. They were in the uh, episode where um, uh, Sun. Uh, <laughs> what are their names? Who are they? <laughs> Glimmer. When you went back to to um, her the house, yeah. yeah, they were all Sailor Moon incidental ponies. I mean, so therefore we couldn't use them anywhere else because that's the town they lived in. Yeah. So we we couldn't put them anywhere else. So it looks like we've mm-hmm. answered the question from the mountaineer Bernie, who was curious mm-hmm. to know what animators thought of Derpy once they noticed the accidental creation. Absolutely Look, so you loved were, her. You were pleased yeah. with that? Yeah, it was, it was just all because we had to zoom out a scene. She was never supposed to be, her face was never supposed to be in, in field. She's just on the edge and now she's here. And then we zoomed <laughs> out. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we've got a perennial favorite question here, which is the favorites question. Um, who is your favorite and your least favorite character to... Oh, no. to- work on to draw oh. or worst or not worst <laughs> this i should never all of them are the best but the uh from just like a mileage of time standpoint any pinkie pie episode or scene had way more poses and animation like things you had to do because she was so bouncy and moving around all the time and so she just took a lot more work she did more faces her hair was always bouncing she was zo- zooming around so any pinkie pie centered episode you just you knew it was going to be more work but it's- yeah. It's, it's fun, interesting that you say work. Pinkie Pie there, because we have another question from Bindi Aurora. Uh, did you hate drawing Rarity's hair as much as the fans did? I'm missing did. something <laughs> here. Is, is Rarity's hair particularly difficult compared to no. Pinkie Pie's? I... Well, hmm. d- different yeah. jobs meant different things. Because for animation, both of them are bouncy. But since Rarity never moved as much, moved around as much... I don't know, her, her hair was always easier to deal with for, for an animation standpoint, because we didn't have to, I didn't have to draw them. We just had symbols in Flash and we would redraw every now and then, but um, board artists, yeah, yeah. take it away. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Pinkie Pie's hair, when I started, I was so frustrated with it because I wanted it to look right. But if like the slightest little whoop, it would look so wrong, but Equestria Girls, rarity's hair i think yeah. is worse yeah. than pony rarity because there's like weird like her diamond things and then it's like in weird chunks yeah and there was like no way in boards to make it look things would always yeah. drift yeah. too yeah. like her little yeah. clippy thing Ugh. and it's like <laughs> it's coming back you... to your stuff <laughs> and it's like when you you can't it's not it's not one of those things that objectively is hard to draw, but with boards, you need to like, you need to get drawings done really fast. So it's just like, yes, yeah, swirl, whatever. It's fine. It looks close enough. And, yeah, and then um, sometimes you'd be like, wait, is that Pinkie Pie or is that Rarity? <laughs> like when we would get the board, sometimes we'd have to like double check which pony is which, but most of the time, or like if, a tr- if Trixie was in an episode and Pinkie Pie was in an episode and Rarity was in an episode, they all had the, <laughs> the hair yeah. kind of, Anyways, mm-hmm. yeah. Applejack, I like w- dealing with she's best pony. And also um, <laughs> just her hair was easier. The hat it was, makes it easy. <laughs> the hat makes it easy. And, and you know, you know, and her hair was in like a ponytail and it was just a bit more bored. She That's have the question. The, oh, sorry. Like Rainbow, oh, Rainbow Dash had the hair streaks and they had to, when she turned her head, sometimes they lined up, sometimes they didn't. And, and like, if you notice, there's an appealing and an unappealing side of each pony. And some of them, like Applejack, her bangs were always the same. Didn't matter yeah. which way her head turned. So little technical things. That's a question I should have asked, actually. We've, we've established who Best Pony is, according to Steph. <laughs> Tori, Megan, do you want to opine on that? For me, it's the same. I love I love Applejack and I love Rarity. Rarity and is my favorite. And I love them together. <laughs> best, best Princess is Luna. Yes. Uh, I'm inclined to agree there. Um, so as a reminder to folks uh, in the Discord, if you have questions you'd like to ask, I'm going to try and get through as many as I can, see where I can uh, fit them into the conversation. Uh, but if you are in bitrate stage, please ask questions in bitrate stage questions, that channel, please otherwise I will not be able to see it. Um, 
So uh, they've got a, a technical question here um, regarding something that you touched on earlier, Steph. Uh, Denim and Venom would like to know um, if the time was quite tight uh, and the tech was limited, in, especially in the earlier seasons, uh, how did that factor into the decision of the model change for Luna, best princess, between season one and season two? Can you talk about that process a little bit? Were you involved mm. in that decision at all? I or? wish I was. At the time, I was just an animator, so I we didn't have much to say, but all I went back to was Sailor Saturn. <laughs> and um, if I don't know how many people watch Sailor Moon, but Sailor Saturn, uh, I cosplay her. She is awesome. Um, she kind of did this thing where she reverted back to a child, and then she grew again like reap was reborn and uh i don't know if that was the plan but in my head i'm like she's like sailor saturn so they had they had her you know she was nightmare moon so she was a baddie and then she kind of got defeated and she was pretty much like full almost full version of herself and then when she came back she just didn't in my head it did, i don't know if it would have felt right having such a small like almost twilight size pony next to celestia like she had to kind of be more magical. Mm. This is all me. I'm not sure if this was the designer's or Hasbro's opinion. Um, so I think it just was like, well, we hadn't seen her from, we didn't see her, I think, until season three. I think it was uh, like the Halloween episode, right? That was season three. Yeah. Right? I could have no. sworn that was the beginning of season two. Is it snips I, or snails? <laughs> I could have sworn, for me, in my head, it's because of where I was sitting in the studio at the time. So season one was down was on the fourth floor and then season two I was in the back on the fifth and then I that was where Stubie's team was sitting and that's where they worked I didn't get to work on them when she came back and I was so mad but the team next to me which was over the little area was working I, I don't know I thought it was everyone everyone in the chat everyone is saying season two <laughs> was it season two I guess I don't know. I'm trusting them yep yep season two <laughs> was it whoa that maybe, actually... they, maybe they moved me that actually um, touches on another question that was asked regarding the way that the episodes are divided up. Um, obviously, it's, it, it is it, I shouldn't say obviously, because it's not obvious. How do you divide up the episodes? Because each episode is in a different stage of production. They're staggered, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and different people must be working on them at different times. So how is the work divided for a given episode? I, I maybe I'll let the board artists talk about the board aspect Please. and then I could talk about yeah well for boards on pony we had six weeks to do it and it was split up so each episode had two board artists and I think the finales usually had like two board artists and a junior board artist because it was you know finale chaos <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, I feel like that's more of a question for a director just for like how everything is divvied up. But usually, I think there was like three directors for most seasons. And it was just kind of each episode. There was became like three up. once once Jason was about to leave. It, it used right. to just be two and then it split to three. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we had six weeks to do the board. So we had like two or three for planning it all out and the rest was for cleanup. So, and then just hop and on then, to the next one. Yeah. And then then there were revisionists because yes. there was no, they had to go right on to the next episode. There's no time for them to do revisions. So there was a separate revision team. Yes. Um, yeah. uh, perhaps we should clarify just for, we should have done this at the beginning, my apologies, but perhaps we can clarify for everyone in the channel um, the exact process uh, oh, of animation because we are throwing out <laughs> there are a lot of different roles and a lot of different areas i wish i had like a whiteboard a... so i could just like yeah yeah it's, it's, you can do a virtual starts... background find a whiteboard one now. but could you sort of give scripts. us the start off with the scripts yes. or sorry going back further it's pitches and then like they kind of uh, this the directors would disappear and the writers and they go and they talk together and they kind of come up with like an overall arc of the show and then they the writers would write the stories and then so we have the scripts scripts would go to design and boards i don't know if it was simultaneously or if it went to design first it would it would go to design first because they would make you the guys designs for our yeah. episodes and then they would usually do voice record and then that way we At would the have time. the voice record and like basic designs for when we started and then we could board yeah. yeah, and then it went to uh, uh, builders, and they would take the designs that the designers made and build them in Flash. So sometimes I hear people call them puppets. We call them builds. Same, same. It's like a rig. 
of all the props, all the backgrounds, all the characters, like background artists, designers, anyways, all that's happening kind of at the same time. And then layout or posing uh, would get it and we pose it all out. And at the time, season one, we would animate it in-house. So then it would go to a separate team of animators who would adjust stuff and in between it and do all the lip sync, eye blinks, everything. And then, <laughs> then it would go to revisionists if needed. And man, it's it's a huge process. And it then there was editing, like they had to trim it to time and then it'd go to sound and it would go, someone has to make all the footstep sounds and there has to be, music has to be put in for the composition. So there's background music. And then it was cut again and it was cut again, <laughs> trimming things around and all this over being overseed by um, the directors. So directors would be dealing with like over, over five episodes at once, definitely. Yeah. Um, the animation supervisors would oversee probably about five episodes at one time. Directors would oversee even more. And sometimes they even, the seasons overlapped. So they'd be working on one season and another season at the same time. So there's so many moving parts. It's it's like a whole, it should be a whole uh, panel. It should be a yeah. panel on its own. Oh gosh, yeah. Next one, next Pony Fest 4.0, we'll, yeah. we'll do a panel. If anyone's interested in like production info, like. It's, I didn't know until I started supervising like how big each episode takes an, a year. They're just staggered. Yeah. So actually, is that uh, I should ask because we're not going to have a chance. I got a 10 minute warning a couple of minutes ago oh, from uh, <laughs> behind the scenes folks. Uh, if folks don't get a chance to have their questions answered here, is it okay if they ask them on, say, Twitter? Or yeah. would you prefer not to, not to have to I'm be answering questions to talk there? about Pony. <laughs> Yeah. You don't mind sharing yeah. your knowledge and enthusiasm there? That's all. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Awesome. Thank you very much. So, there's folks also, in the chat, there's some things we can and can't say, but right yeah. within <laughs> within the usual provisions of keep your questions appropriate and uh, within the scope of non disclosure agreements, behave basically, folks. Yeah. And we, <laughs> we we trust you too. You're all sensible people. Talking to the audience, you're all sensible people too on the panel. Um, <laughs> Drap Tap has a very interesting question here. Uh, he remembers Wooty, I beg your pardon, they remember Wooty saying that uh, MLP's unique layout process was something that Wooty was probably the proudest of uh, and that layout doesn't get talked about much. Steph, could you could you talk about what made the layout process particularly special? Mm, what Wooty may have been referring to there? I think just more, I don't want to say that this sounds bad when I say it, but like assembly line in a way, um, because a lot of times other shows I worked on, you would, you would, uh, take all your, your assets that the builders made and you would assemble them and take the storyboards from the storyboard artist and you would set everything up, pose all your stuff and then animate all your stuff. And in animation at the time, you didn't get paid until it was 100% approved. So it didn't matter how many revisions you needed to do, you didn't get paid until it was 100% approved. It was a really long process and, and also it took way more time. So in splitting up into a posing, they called it layout, which is a old, traditional animation term for camera move, ca backgrounds and character placement. Um, but they do refer to more or less the same. Kind of, it's like a mix of key posing animation and and uh, layout. It's it's really okay. bizarre, but yeah, it's, it's kind of just trying to separate those two. So you could have simultaneous teams working on multiple episodes at once, I think takes a little bit of the burden off as well. And also it made it easier for us to send stuff overseas uh, so we could keep pumping out more content, really. Yeah. And I think Equestria Girls was fully overseas at Top Draw for the animation. Yeah, That's why our team in Vancouver was so small. It's because all of the animation and um, all of the layout- Even the layout, done. yeah. Yeah, even the layout was done in top, at, at Top Draw. Yeah. So you had the better building and it was more empty, that's- that's just not fair. Well, we, were, we were sharing a floor with uh, Mega Man fully charged. Okay. Like, yeah. Um, and uh, Carmen San Diego, like all the animators for Carmen San Diego were on the other side of the floor. <laughs> yeah. We have a question here uh, regarding. Oh, thank you. Tor Tori, you're, double, you're multitasking here. There was a question asking for, for folks to post their Twitter <laughs> handles, and Tori is on top of that, posting all of your Twitter that. handles. There. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, thank you very much. So. Um, I had a question here regarding uh, art block and how you power through that. Uh, I know, Megan, you touched a little bit on uh, using some of the... Uh, channeling some of the emotion into your work if you are dealing with uh, a loss or that 
particular set of challenges. But if you are just not feeling creatively inspired, is it the pressure of a deadline? Is it the paycheck? What what gets you through art Both block? of those are pretty good motivators. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I feel like I always just struggle with art block and just like kind of grind through it. <laughs> just the grind. Yeah. It's like yeah. you, when it's your job, like you have to grind, like you have to push through it. Yeah. And it's, I guess the downside to that is um, you're, you're always burnt out when it comes to personal work. Cause you're just, I don't do um, anything personal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no. I, I, yeah. All my personal work is really a few and far between and especially now um, because of uh, just social distancing and isolation, mm. um, Wild Brain is having everybody work from home and uh, we're all using our work machines. Mm. So I've had to like put my personal, um, my personal art setup like away because <laughs> I don't have any desk space for it. Oh, <laughs> it's no. just all taken up by the work rig. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, a, a way that I like to get through it, like art block, is usually like I'll watch something that inspires me or like I'll do something else creative that isn't what I'm usually doing. Yeah, I do um, other, other stuff. Like totally my favorite thing stuff. is playing D&D with my pals. <laughs> we didn't even yeah. get a chance to talk about D&D and oh, gaming. Yeah. That, was, that was on the list as well. Oh, yeah. Let's just keep talking. And are in a campaign together. Yeah. Really? I'm, yeah. I'm in a campaign with Megan and with Steph. Two separate, separate campaign yeah. campaigns. <laughs> Fabulous. Yeah. Uh, we've got time for another couple of questions, I yes, think. Yes, let's go. Um, Lightning round. Yes. Uh, tips that you might have or advice for young artists who would like to pursue a career in storyboarding or, or in animation in general. Best tip, aside from grinding and powering through art block. Well, don't grind and power through art block <laughs> if you can help it, because that'll just make things worse. Ah, okay. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah, if you're just starting out, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Be nice to everybody. I swear, it's... It, if you make enemies, <laughs> and I, I, this sounds weird, but like, it's just a lot of times it, sometimes it's not, you're, you see two artists or, you know, you have an interview or someone knows someone like it's a small community. And if you're a jerk, no one's going to want to work with you. And I feel like, no, it doesn't matter how good you are. It's like that three circle thing. You could be, you know, like a Venn diagram. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I think and it's also that's, like, oh, sorry. No, no, I'm just saying it's, it's a small community. People know each other and a lot of people get jobs based on, oh, I know someone and they're really good and you should hire them. And I, I don't know. That's, yeah. I come from a, I got hired, I started in 05. So it's different. Like Twitter wasn't a thing. So it wasn't like, put your art on Twitter. It was like, talk to Put people. your art on DeviantArt. <laughs> Not yeah. even. Like I, I my space. first demo reel was like a physical demo reel. Anyway. Yeah. Um, I think if you're a, like a junior artist starting out, like draw, draw a lot and like draw from life. Like if you can draw lots of gestures of, of people and of animals, I think that helps a lot. Went for, back to t traditional basics. Yes. Yeah. When you're getting into boards, because it's a lot of drawing and it's got to be quick and clear. So yeah, gesture yeah. is super important in boards. Mm -hmm. So but focus also, on the fundamentals and be nice. Yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, I don't know how accurate. Too. I don't know how accurate what I said is anymore. But no, it's a good lesson. No, stuff. it's, it's, it's good. important. Like, just the amount of people I've even seen. It's it's kind of coming off your point a little, Steph. Is that like insulting? Insulting shows themselves that you're like, oh, this is the worst thing ever. Like so much vitriol for something like say thundercats roar because people are in an uproar about thundercats roar see what and, you did there yeah i that time i did mean it <laughs> um it's it's just oh this is this is the worst you ruined my childhood this is like the i can't believe you that you would do this anyway here's my demo reel it's like it <laughs> not gonna get know. you anywhere yeah yeah, yeah it's that's not to say like you're totally free to like criticize shows but just being like an outright jerk about something that like a big team has put a lot of work into like it's it's just not gonna make anybody want to work with you i think even like asking questions too like be be okay with not knowing things and like yeah. ask ask questions and be curious so in the last 30 seconds 
projects that you would like to plug that you can actually talk about? Because I know you've probably got things in the pipeline that you're not able to talk about, but are there things that you would like to plug, please? Ah! Okay, real, real quick, real quick. I'm I working in video it. games now and I'm working on Don't Starve Together um, by Clay Entertainment. So Clay. check it out. Don't Starve video Together. Games. Don't Starve uh, Together. I didn't prepare for this. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> There's a Kickstarter that I want to plug because I'm a part of it. Uh, it's right. for pride D D dice fabulous um I'm gonna we'll skip you it. we'll skip you and we'll come yes. back yes, Megan, what me. about you <laughs> um i don't know if i have anything to plug uh <laughs> well, let's let's do this yeah. if you do think of things that you want to plug and tori you've got that kickstarter that you want to plug uh we'll get it in the chats and we'll get it on twitter and we'll get it retweeted by the ponyfest online account and we'll make sure and folks in the channel we're we're uh counting on you to help spread those links as widely as possible yes you all up for that yes you would like yeah <laughs> Awesome. Don't, I don't want to force anyone into anything. <laughs> no, force them. That they'll they'll listen to you. Tell them. Shout at them. Use your authority. No. <laughs> All right. Um, we do. Uh, we do. Unfortunately, have to leave it there. Um, okay. <laughs> so I just want to say a huge thank you to Steph Mahoney, Tori Grant, and Megan Parker. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having. Thanks us. for having us. Thanks for having us. It was a lot. Enjoy of fun. your weekend and stay safe out there, everybody. Yeah. Kind to everybody. <laughs> and folks, uh, next up on this channel, we have TKO, the battle for the Fuffist T. Mm. So that'll be coming up at, at 8 p.m. Stay tuned. All right. Goodbye. Bye, Bye folks. <laughs> I'm 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 totally waving that they, they can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>